the role that I adopt in this particular class is really one of a facilitator. So I'm telling my students that, you know, this is your class, this is your canvas, and it's for you to communicate to the rest of the class what you got or didn't get out of a particular information source. Because remember, the goal of all of this is to really have students understand the limitations um, and the strengths of, of a particular information source. By serving as devil's advocate, I think students start to recognize that it's okay to offer ideas even if they are not one's own. You know, we'll typically in a class offer multiple competing narratives to explain a given case study. You know, I think that uh, I, I really like to emphasize surprise because surprise does some really good things to our brains. Um, surprise forces us to carefully evaluate the thing that surprises us. So, you know, if we're walking through the woods, we see something we've never seen before, it's really important that we pay attention to what that thing is. And once we see it, then we can expend some mental effort to categorize it based on what we already know. So for example, we'll go to um, the World Bank website and we'll look at their measurement of corruption across countries and we'll say, well, you know, they give a quantitative measure of how corrupt India is versus how corrupt Nigeria is versus how corrupt the United States is, but what does corruption really mean, right? How is the World Bank defining corruption and how does that differ from how I might define corruption or how does that differ from what corruption might mean in a completely different political or social context. So really kind of unpacking the ideas and the assumptions that go behind um, the information sources that we trust because we tend to think, oh, the World Bank, you know, they're full of really informed individuals that know a lot, and that's true, but they also come with their own assumptions that we're trying to unpack. Um, but we start off by experimenting with a new approach to, um, to um, thinking about what experimental design might be. And so it takes a certain amount of courage to uh, approach a class and say, okay, today we're gonna go outside and we're going to um, drop Mentos in Coke and at the end of it, you're going to understand how to run an experiment. I'll present case studies uh, they may or may not be familiar with and I'll um, build up that case study from one particular narrative. Uh, I'll offer you know, the insights maybe from a discipline and we'll develop those arguments fairly fully from that disciplinary orientation or from that particular framing. And then it might be that same day or it might be on a following day, I'll present them with a different narrative that might come from a, a, a different stakeholder's perspective or a dis different disciplinary orientation and we'll develop that one fairly fully and uh, create the opportunity for, st for students to, I guess, really find their footing in both explanations of a particular policy situation. In my experience, the most progress that I've had is in the quality of their written work. And what I see at the beginning of the term is that it's difficult for students to capture an argument in that short of, um, um, of a format, in part because they've been encouraged to write more uh, and more and more in other classes, including some of my other classes. But I tell them that in this particular class, the idea is to be concise and to be clear. And that takes practice. And I tell them, you know, I practice at it all the time as well. So as they get to their second, third, fourth briefing paper, I find that they tend to be much, much stronger in just getting to the point, but getting to the point in a way where their explanation is clear. And that's a very, very difficult balance. My goal is to give them a structured environment where they can think about where, uh, I guess, disciplined insights coming from those different perspectives can come together and inform a, their understanding of a real world situation. So they are already aware that the world is complex and messy and anything I can give them in terms of a framework to make sense of that, I would say is a net benefit. Um, the students themselves are coming out of our classes not just with uh, a set of tools and a knowledge base, but they're also coming out with the ability to thrive in a dynamic environment. So they can change as 
the industry changes, as their work environment changes, as their responsibilities changes, because they have the critical thinking skills and the creativity to, um, to take those um, capabilities that they've developed and very confidently adapt them to a new space. And that's what's going to, uh, to help them to thrive. Thank you.